Welcome to the LSC Methodology Institute SPSS tutorial series, sponsored by the LSC Annual Fund. In this video, we'll give you a brief introduction to binary logistic regression. For this example of binary logistic regression, we'll be using this variable here, petition, as our response variable, where we ask respondents whether or not they've ever signed a petition. We've coded 0 for no and 1 for yes to that question. For explanatory variables, we're using this variable here, vote, where we ask respondents whether or not they intend to vote with 0 for no and 1 for yes. The number of volunteer groups in which the respondent is involved. The respondent's gender with 0 for female and 1 for male. And finally, the respondent's age in years. So to carry out a binary logistic regression in SPSS, we click Analyze, Regression, and Binary Logistic. So first we want to put in our response variable, which is Petition, so we click on it, and we click on this arrow and we see that it appears in the box under the word Dependent. To get our explanatory variables, we click on, say, Vote, and then click on this arrow here and then this is the question about voluntary groups we click on it and then again click on the same arrow click on the respondents gender click again on the arrow and finally the respondents age and then click on the arrow in this case we've coded all of our categorical variables as 0 and 1 such as gender and vote but if we had a different coding, uh, say if we had a categorical variable with more than two categories, what we can do for this type of analysis is click on this button here that says categorical and then say we choose vote and then click on this arrow and then what we can do is we can indicate which category we have as our reference category and then SPSS will do the rest but we won't do that for this example. The other thing we want to do before we actually click on OK is click on Options and we also want to display the confidence intervals so we click on this checkbox here and we see that the default option is 95 so we're going to get the 95% confidence intervals as well. So we click on Continue, we click on OK and then we let SPSS do its thing And here's what we see in the output window. You'll notice that there are many tables containing various pieces of information, and I won't go through each one of them, but I would just point out that these subheadings here are useful when you're testing blocks of models against each other. So in this very simple example where we've just run a single model, to find the parameter estimates for the model that we've just run, we need to select the very last table in the list. And here you'll see that we have a row for each of the explanatory variables in our model with information about the constant or the intercept contained in the last uh, row of the table. So let's take a very quick look at the relationships between the explanatory variables and our response variable. Remember, vote is a binary variable, coded 1 if you intend to vote in the next election, and 0 if not. Now we can express the relationship between the intention to vote and signing a petition in two different ways. We can say that the intention to vote increases the logit, or the estimated log odds of signing a petition, by 1.592 units. And we can also express this same relationship in terms of odds ratio. So if we take the exponential of 1.592, we'll obtain 4.915. So we can say that those who intend to vote in the next election are nearly five times as likely to sign a petition as those who don't intend to vote in the next election. And in the last two columns, we have the lower and upper limits of the 95% confidence interval, which is two times at the lower level and about 11 times at the upper level. And then those middle columns in the table give us information about the significance test for that estimated coefficient. So here we're testing the a null hypothesis that in the population, there's no difference in the logarithm of the odds of signing a petition for voters compared to non-voters. In other words, this coefficient is zero, or this odds ratio is 1. And here we have the standard error for the estimates. 
of the coefficients and we have the test statistics which is a walled test statistic in this case on one degree of freedom and a p-value which is very small so at any conventional significance level we could say we could reject that null hypothesis and infer that controlling for all of the other variables in our model there is a relationship between your intention to vote and your likelihood of signing a petition Looking to the next row of the output, this is information about uh, voluntary groups, the number of voluntary groups that you belong to. And this coefficient indicates that for every unit increase in that variable, in other words, for every extra voluntary group that a person belongs to, the model estimates that their logit, that is the log odds of their signing a petition, increases by 0.474 units, by nearly half a unit. And that translates into multiplying the odds of signing a petition by 1.6. So you take the exponential of 0.474, you'll obtain 1.606. So in other words, controlling for all of the other variables in the model, for every extra voluntary group that a person belongs to, their odds of signing a petition increase by about 60%. And again, if you like, you can uh, report the confidence interval, a 95% confidence interval for that estimate. And again, we can test the null hypothesis that in the population, controlling for all of the other variables in the model, there is no relationship between number of voluntary groups and signing a petition, which once again would, would of course imply that this coefficient is zero or that this uh, odds ratio is one. And here's our test statistic, walled uh, statistic, and our p-value, which is here 0 0.011 which seems to me pretty strong convincing evidence against the null hypothesis so you could if you were using significance levels say that you reject the null hypothesis at the 5% level but of course you couldn't reject it not quite at the 1% level it would just be borderline now skimming quickly to the uh, p-values for the other two explanatory variables in the model you can quickly see that they're fairly high higher than any conventional significance level that we might use for inferring a relationship between those two variables and the response variable. And you can see correspondingly that the estimates of their, um, of their coefficients on the logit scale are very close to zero, which translate into odds ratios very close to one. So the message seems to be that controlling for the other variables in the model, there isn't any significant relationship between gender and petition signing, nor between age and petition signing. So that was just a very quick introduction to binary logistic regression, running a very simple model with two binary explanatory variables and two continuous explanatory variables, and taking a quick look at the main results from SPSS. And we'll leave it there for now.